Hello and welcome to another video here at AV Forums. This time we're taking you through our recommended picture settings for the LG OLED 65E6 Ultra HD 4K TV. So the first thing you'll need to do is go into the menu system. And a little trick here, if you hold down the settings button on the remote control, it'll take you directly into the picture menu. So we're going to show you a number of different settings. We're going to show you a nighttime setting, a daytime setting, and we'll also take a look at the HDR and Dolby Vision settings. So starting off with the daytime setting, we're using ISF Expert Brightroom. The idea behind having a daytime and a nighttime setting is you have a brighter setting for a daytime viewing in a room with ambient light in it. But you don't want it too bright at night when the room is much darker. Because that can be a fatiguing for the eyes, so that's why we're having a darker setting for watching TV at night. So first of all, we need to select the correct aspect ratio. Depending on the content you're watching, you could select either 16 to 9 or original. But the important thing is to make sure that just scan is on so that your pixel mapping are not overscaling the image and losing any high resolution detail. Then we go into the picture menus. And as you can see, we have OLED light set to 40, contrast set to 80, brightness set to 50, horizontal and vertical sharpness set to zero, color set to 50, and tint set to zero. Moving on to the expert controls, dynamic contrast off, super resolution off. For color gamut, we're using a normal setting, which is closest to Rec 709 and appropriate for standard dynamic range content. Edge enhancer off, color filter off. We're using a gamma of 2.2 for a daytime setting. And then in the white balance control, we've got the color temperature of white set to warm to, which is closest to the industry standard of D65. Out of the box, the grayscale on the E6 measured very accurately, so we didn't need to do much to improve that accuracy. In fact, all we needed to do was to use the two-point control and increase red by one and blue by five. We didn't even need to use the 20-point control. And we had a grayscale that was very accurate with errors below two and most below one. So even if we had used a 20-point control, we wouldn't be able to see the difference. Also, given these are general settings for use on multiple TVs rather than the specific one that we were calibrating and reviewing here, we recommend just increasing red by one and blue by five and seeing how that looks. The same goes for the color management system. We could go in and adjust the colors, but actually we found that when we measured the color gamut after selecting normal and calibrating the grayscale, it actually measured very closely to Rec 709. And there would be minimal benefit from using the CMS. So for these general settings, we recommend just leaving the color management system alone. Then if you look at the picture options, here noise reduction off, MPEG noise reduction off, black level set to low, eye motion care off, and we've set true motion to off. That's for film-based content like movies and TV dramas. If you want to use true motion, you could experiment with it, perhaps with video-based content like fast-paced sports content, but we always recommend that for any film-based content, you leave it off. So that's the daytime setting. Now let's go into the ISF Expert Darkroom. As you can see, it's a little bit darker. And here we've got OLED lights set to 25. Otherwise, a lot of the settings are the same. So contrast, brightness, horizontal and vertical sharpness, color and tint are all the same as they were for the daytime setting. Going into the expert controls, again, very similar. These are all set to off. And again, we're using the normal color gamut setting. We've got a gamma of 2.4 this time, which is more appropriate for a nighttime setting in a dark room with very little ambient light. In terms of the white balance controls, again, we're using a curved temperature of warm too. It actually measured exactly the same as the bright room setting, so all we needed to do was increase red by one and blue by five, and we had a very accurate grayscale. Again, there wasn't any real need to use the color management system. So moving on to picture options, again, noise reduction off, MPEG noise reduction off, black level low, motion eye care off, and true motion set to off for film-based content. But again, feel free to experiment as it's sometimes a question of personal taste. Okay, so those are our day and night settings for standard dynamic range content. In other words, most of the content that you're currently watching. However, if you have an Ultra HD Blu-ray player or are watching some of the HDR content you can stream from Amazon or Netflix, we'll now show you our settings for HDR content. So we'll need to change the input to an HDR source. But before we do that, one quick tip. If you go over to General, and then down here you'll find HDMI Ultra HD Deep Color. Select that and ensure that any HDMI input that's being used for an HDR source, such as an Ultra HD Blu-ray player, is set to on. 
So we're using HDMI 1 for our Ultra HD Blu-ray player and we've got it turned on. You need to do that to ensure that you get the full HDR effect. Now that we've done that, we'll change the signal and show you some HDR settings. Okay, so now we're sending an HDR signal to the TV. And if we go into the menu, you can see that it's detected an HDR signal and immediately gone into the HDR mode. We're using HDR standard. There are other modes, but in terms of image accuracy, we recommend using HDR standard when watching HDR 10 content, such as Ultra HD Blu-ray and streaming services like Amazon and Netflix. Although in the case of the latter, there's also Dolby Vision content, which we'll come back to in a moment. So let's go into the HDR standard settings, most of which we're going to leave at their default settings, because as it stands, the calibration of HDR displays is still in flux. So these are just general suggestions for an accurate and effective HDR setting. So OLED light 100, contrast 100, brightness 50, sharpness 0, color 50 and tint 0. Now we'll go into the expert controls, which are very similar to the standard dynamic range settings with dynamic contrast off, super resolution off, color gamut is set to wide so we can use the entire native color gamut, which is 70% of Rec 2020, which forms the basis for Ultra HD content. Set the edge enhancement off and the color filter off, but there's no need to change the white balance and color management system. Then we can go into the picture options. Again, most of these you can turn off, and with true motion, given that most of the Ultra HD content we're watching at the moment is film and TV drama, we'll recommend leaving it off. So that's the HDR settings. Now we'll switch to a Dolby Vision source and we'll show you those settings as well. And finally, we're sending a Dolby Vision signal. As you can see, the E6 has detected Dolby Vision signal and automatically gone into Dolby Vision picture mode. There are three different Dolby Vision picture modes, but we're using Dolby Vision Movie Dark, which is the one that Dolby recommend you use because it's the most accurate setting. The majority of the settings in the Dolby Vision modes are the default settings and some are even greyed out. But as we go down you can see that you've got OLED light at 50, contrast at 100, brightness at 50, we'll set the sharpness to 0, colour at 50 and tint is greyed out. In the expert controls, dynamic contrast is off, super resolution is off, colour gamut is greyed out, edge enhancer off, colour filter off, and the gamma is also greyed out. Then in the picture options, noise reduction we've turned off, and the rest are all greyed out. And as always, true motion is off for film based content. And that's it for our settings for a day mode, a night mode, HDR10, and also Dolby Vision. Thanks for watching.